folks here is what we're going to be making for january's stamp club these really cute easel post-it note holders and one has a little calendar on it super cute so great little teacher gift little appreciation gift so i hope you like this project so follow along with me if you have your kit or if you just want to grab some of your own paper and make this with me so this one we're going to use sapphire blue cardstock and serenity paper i found these adorable little calendars at a shop a scrapbook shop but i'm sure you could find these online and our little gnome guy love the well gnomes who doesn't love gnomes these days they're everywhere so cute so i wanted to use one of our little garden gnomes with wood grain paper on this one so i'll show you that stamp set first this is from our garden gnome stamp set so you have two guys there the mushroom house and a couple little messages and accessories and look at all these dies there is a die for everything in this stamp set super cute and they make excellent santa clauses and little elves and i want to show you too one thing i like to do when i get a, a new set like this that i like i stamp a bunch of the images and then use the dies the thin cuts to cut them out and then i put them in the envelope so when i want to make a card with them i have a bunch of pieces at the ready i don't need to pull everything out just one at a time and and make it i've got a bunch ready to go and they're right in the pouch so that's how i store them so that works for me when i want to start crafting so I will show you first how to score your papers. This is so super simple to put together. So this piece here, this is a four and three quarter by seven inch piece of paper. We're gonna score a half inch down the long sides and then we're gonna score at four and four and a half. Easy peasy. So I'll start with that. So a half inch down the long sides And then four and four and a half. So the other part that we want to do with this is make these little cutouts at the top. So this is an inch and a half down. This is the, the longer piece. You can see with these score lines here at four and four and a half that one is shorter and one is longer. So on this longer section, I'm going to turn it this way, measure in an inch and a half on the top and the bottom here and just make a little mark there so we know we're going to cut that away so an inch and a half and i'm just going to flip it around to do an inch and a half on this side and you can go ahead and give those uh score marks a nice crease This cardstock that I'm using is cashmere, which has been discontinued, but uh, this color would also really work well with craft cardstock or maybe the almond color. So there's your score marks folded with a bone folder. So where we made that inch and a half little mark, you can even just take a pencil and make that mark there. You don't have to score it. We're going to just cut that little piece away. So make it that little snip on that inch and a half line and then cut on your score mark. So we're removing that. And then these little tabs we're going to make slits on and you can actually just cut them away. So when you make a box, this is kind of box making 101, you cut the slits for your little tabs and you can fold them to the inside and then you can see how easily that folds up into your little pocket. But they're, they're kind of in the way. They're not really doing anything. It doesn't matter to the structure of the box. So you can actually just cut those little tabs off and eliminate them. Okay, so the big piece, this one is super simple too. This is three and three quarter inches by ten and a half inches. And you're going to score at four, eight, nine, ten. So that's what that's going to look like. Hold it the long way. And we're going to score at four, eight, nine, ten. And then go ahead and give those a nice smash with your bone folder. 
And what's happening down here is uh, we're going to make a, a little mountain. Mountain valley. Mountain fold. So, oh, here we go. Sorry about that. So it's going to look like a, a little tent. And then the big flap is going to get glued onto that half inch portion. So that's what that's going to look like when you glue that. And that's how that's going to come together real easily. So I'll just put a little bit of adhesive. You can use uh, Tombow, you can use liquid glue, you can use a uh, tape runner, liquid glass, score tape. So you're gluing that half inch piece onto the front. So that's what you're going to end up with. So before we glue this piece together, let's glue our pattern pieces on. So I have the wood grain for this one. And the shorter piece is going to go on the front flap. So you need to fold this up or you could just put it this way. And there's going to be just, oh, maybe a 16th inch border. If I cut your paper correctly, which I hope I did. And this one is going to go on the inside. So when this comes up into our box, you can see we've got one on the inside and then one on the outside of your pocket there. So you can go ahead and glue those now that we have the panels on. Whatever adhesive you prefer. And what I often like to do is stick my bone folder in here. I'll Put the glue on and then you can use a pencil just something to kind of hold a little bit of pressure you can use your you can use your scissors just something to hold a little bit of pressure on there as it dries so there's your box shape guys so two pieces you have your easel and then the pocket and the pocket is the exact same shape as the whole front you're going to just simply glue this onto the entire front surface of your easel piece so again liquid glass liquid glue tape runner score tape whatever you like to use here cover that whole surface and stick it So you can see that is the same size. Again, you can use your bone folder to kind of go inside that pocket there, give it a good smash. So your blue one is going to come together exactly the same way. I have that one already scored, but I used a corner rounder on the top there, which I thought added a nice different look, a little decorative edge to it. So when you corner rounder the top there, you have to punch through the two layers of cardstock. So use a little muscle power there. And the Serenity paper that we have here. This is just, I can't get enough of this paper. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And when we have our two-tone cardstock, I like to have the darker side on the outside. That's your personal preference. If you want the lighter side, just reverse it. So I do need to corner around the top of this piece so that when I glue it to the inside, it's going to carry on. 
You don't need to corner around or corner around the bottom pieces, just the top. Just a sixteenth inch of a border. So then when you fold your pocket up, you can't even tell that the inside is the lighter side and this is the darker side. It, it just doesn't it doesn't show, it won't matter. And glue your sides. Let that bond for a second. Put in your bone folder if you want to. Give it some pressure as that bonds. So yeah, I liked I like the corner round idea just to give it a decorative finish there. Looks polished, nicely finished. Alrighty, so following suit with the same way, just cover cover the whole surface with your adhesive and glue it right onto the easel portion here. So, and with this one, uh, super simple. All you're going to do is take, I have a piece of gold cardstock, gold foil, and then these little calendar stacks, just glue it onto that and onto the front of your pocket. And there you have it. So I added some post-it notes in there. And then there's a little decorative pen. You could find these particular pens um, at the dollar store where it screws, the bottom screws out. Not all pens are made like this, but if you can find these pens that the, the ink comes out, I took a piece of pattern paper. Oh, it's about three quarter inches by four inches. And you're going to wrap it around the ink you got to just kind of really coax that paper in a real tight tight wrap around that pen. Make it nice and tight and snug. Roll it in between your fingers there. And then you just pop that right inside the tube. So you have this real pretty coordinating pen. Super cute. So there's your blue one. And then to put our little gnomes together, I want to show you how, how I did that. Just a little bit of coloring. This little banner strip is from our waterfall thin cut dies. And I stamped the hello friend on there. The little mushroom house, uh, I stamped in desert rose ink. And I just cut the top of the little mushroom out. And then the bottom we're going to color that. And here's the colors that I'm using in our Spectrum Noir Tri-Blends. Fair Skin, Brown Gray, Earth Brown, Gold Yellow, and Dull Green. So I used the gray on the mushroom part of the house, and the gold yellow for the windows, and the earth brown. I'm going to use the light of that and just go around the door. Fill that in, the window sills, and over here at this lantern. And come to that mid-tone and just go around that doorway for a little bit of contrast. I put some foam tape on the back of that little mushroom piece. So again, I just stamped the top in Desert Rose ink and fussy cut it. And then put it over top. Isn't that adorable? So cute. So our little gnome guy, uh, the Fair Skin Blend, he's got a nose here that we're going to color and a little bit of hands here. So light, go over with some medium, maybe just over half his nose there and the dark edge of that just adds a nice little contrast. And then go back over it all again with the light side to blend. Real smooth. The hat I did with the gold yellow. I used the light, medium, and dark for that. And then dull green, I did the patches on his hat. And these are stamped. Stamped onto his little hat. Little medium can... 
Go around the edges there. Whoops. Sometimes this happens with your markers and you just, when you pull it, when you pull it out, just click it real tight. And then sometimes you just gotta weasel it with your fingernails to get that little edge out. And I do not have fingernails, so there we go. You just gotta kind of hold pressure on it. Pop that out. And while you're working with it, you don't have to cap it real tight. If those if those pop out on you easily as you're working with it, don't push it all the way down as you're still continuing to work with it. Just cap it lightly. Go back over the whole thing with the light. And then his coat, I'm going to do the same thing with going over it all in the light. The light tip of the dull green marker. Come to the mid-tone and do a little bit of shading. And when you do these light, medium, dark tones while you're coloring, this is good, going to blend very nicely while it's still wet. So don't color and then come back to it later. You want to keep working with it while it's still wet because you're going to get the nicest most even blend while that ink is still wet. Just going over those little stitch marks. And I, I like the way that looks. I'll come back to the light and then smooth it out and you can see how it just really pulls and blends all that color together. And I like that color combination together too. So earth brown, I'm going to use the light. We're going to do his shoes and the earth brown. Light tone. Let's do a little shading with the medium here. Dark. Add a little bit more depth. Go back with light to blend it. All right, and then his beard with brown gray. When I, I read it, I, I didn't read it. I was at a class of coloring and great tip when using gray colors, anything that is living, if you're coloring um, skin or say an elephant, something that's living, use your warm gray tones and anything that is inanimate use cool gray tones so like clothing or uh, a bucket uh, a flower pot use your cool gray tones for that but anything that's like living use your warm gray tones so i have the brown gray version to do his beard and i just did a little bit of flicking i'll kind of pull this up so you can maybe see a little bit of flicking that i did with the beard color thing there. So starting with the light, I start from his nose and just kind of kind of flick out and down and then around the curl on the bottom. Medium tone, same thing, just adding the the layers and the dimensions there. So just a little bit of flicking, pulling it down and around that curl and the bottom up here, adding in some texture there. And if you want to come to the dark tone, just a couple here. Adds in some nice little texture there. And if you want, come back over with the light and you can kind of go over that and blend it, pulling it down a little bit more, a little longer. It's 
smooths it out a little bit. So just a little bit of flicking there with with his little beard. Really, really cute. Hope you like that. And then just glue that onto your little box. And if you want, I use platinum stickles. You can add some texture and dimension on your mushroom house by just going over that with some stickles. I thought that was just a, a cute little pizzazz. Add some stickles. Ooh, I might have a clog. Let's see. But you get the idea there. And with the stickles, I added two little dots on the Hello Friend just to kind of carry that through. So I hope you like these projects. They were really fun and easy to make and uh, fun coloring with our little gnome, guys. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye.